And you gave it to the Lord. You said, Lord, I'm, I'm no longer going to fight battles that I can't win. Because if you think you can beat Satan, you're, you're not smart. That's all I'm going to say. Is you're not smart. Because he's a great adversary. But let me tell you what. When you tag team with God, when you tag team with Jesus, you're the tag team champions of the world. Can't nobody take you down. You're the best that there ever was. So don't. Don't look at your problem and say it's nine foot nine inches tall. Because when you look at it and say it's nine foot nine inches tall, you know what you're not going to do? You're not going to win. Because you're looking at the outside. You're looking at the problem from your carnal perspective. But when you step behind the lenses that God provides you, you say, He said, if I had faith of a mustard seed, I could say to this mountain, move from here and go to there. And it's time that we claim victory in our lives. Yeah. It's time that we begin to fight the battle with the tools that God has equipped each and every one of us with. So David has has a, a, a slingshot, very different than the slingshots that we use today. You know, the slingshot, like uh, my brother's habit has like this cool thing, and you can shoot it like a mile, and all that thing. And when I was a kid, we had the stick and rubber band, yeah. and went like five feet. <laughs> but, the, but the slingshot that, that David has, it, it's more or less, a, more or less a, a, a piece of cloth or a piece of leather, and it, and it traps it here, and it's very much like catapults. Have you guys ever seen the old catapults in the way that it would lunge like this and shoot it to a, a city wall? It's the same way. They would, he would stick that stone in, and, and the momentum would create he didn't have to hardly do any work because as he's doing like this, when he lets it go, it slings that rock out at a very, very high rate. And so not only does it come out at a high rate, but it comes out at a very, very high rate. Why do we know that it came out of David's sling at such a high rate? There's one key thing in Scripture. It sunk into Goliath's it forehead. It sunk into Goliath's forehead. Okay. How tall is Goliath? Nine foot nine. Nine foot nine. And, and how much does his armor weigh? Probably about 200 pounds, right? So he's nine foot nine. He's carrying 200 pounds around with him all the time. That means that dude probably has, as the kids call it today, a big dome. A big head. And his skull is probably an inch thick. I'm talking about he got a big head. I mean, you don't get nine foot nine weighing hundreds of pounds without a big head. He got a big head. Y'all say big head. Big Have y'all ever seen a kid with a big head? If you haven't, I'll get my son. He got a big head. Oh. He got a big head. And they throw that rock. He throws it. And he hits him. And it sinks into his head. Which meant that David threw that rock hard. He kills the giant. How can he do that? Here's the one thing. If we retrace back, how did David really come into the picture of Saul's court? He played the liar, didn't he? When Saul would have his mental breakdowns, he would go crazy. David would come in and he would play a liar for him. And, it, and how did he get that position in Saul's court? I mean, a musical instrument. How do you learn how to play a musical instrument? You don't just walk up there and say, no, I'll play the piano or not. Ling, 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 ling. You don't do that, right? It takes hours of practice and practice and practice and practice. Because if there was, if there was a person who could just walk up there and do it, you wouldn't have had me up there tonight. That's a fact. That's one thing we know. So here's the thing. Is it takes hours of practice and preparation. So the same principle is applied here to David throwing the stone with a sling. David didn't just say, hey, I'll take out that giant and pick up a sling from somebody and grab a stone and start doing like this and say, maybe I'll get lucky. I mean, and that wasn't the way it worked. David had spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours out throwing rocks to hit trees or to hit other things or to kill game. He had practiced. So what's a principle that we can understand, that we can draw from, is that if you want something, what do you have to do? You have to work at it. That's yep. right. You have to work at it. And that's a biblical principle. Because it, sometimes we want to take faith and we want to say, if God doesn't heal somebody, 
then the first time I pray for them, then I, then I don't have enough faith. That's not true. The disciples that went and they tried to heal people in towns, and there was a guy specifically that they couldn't heal. That's right. And Jesus said to them, some things it takes prayer and fasting. What is fasting? How many of y'all heard of fasting before? What is fasting? Work. If you don't think fasting is not work, why don't you start tomorrow and fast for the next week? Find out how much work it really is. Now, I mean, that's what it is. How many of y'all like to eat? Amen. amen. I don't think you said amen loud enough. How many of you like to eat? Amen. Amen. That's right. Get some good cornbread, some good white beans. There you go. A little bit, a little bit of pepper. I like the crushed red pepper. But you just wait till you don't get some food for a couple days. You will say, "Lord, this is some work." So next time that you want something, you want to see God move on something, you got to do a little work. It wasn't easy for Jesus to sit there and take those 39 stripes across his back. It wasn't easy for him to take those three rusty nails and put in each one of his limbs. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for him to look temptation in the eye when Satan took him up on the mountain and said, I will give everything to you if you just bow down to me. It wasn't easy. It was work. And if you want something in life, you know what you have to do? Work for it. If we're willing to put in the time, God is willing to put in the work. So here's the question. What giant are you facing tonight? What giant is in your life that is on your horizon? What giant is coming out every morning and looking at you and saying, I'm going to kick your tail? What giant is doing that to you every day? Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's time that you, that you come up tomorrow morning and you say, Satan, I rebuke your sickness. I rebuke these things that you have against me and the keys that you have because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than the problems that face me in this earth. I claim victory and I will win. Or maybe it's financial burdens. You're in debt up to your eyeballs and you can't breathe. Let me tell you something. God has a way. But you know what you have to do? You have to work. You have to make a plan and you have to work your plan. You can't just say, God, send me a check in the mail. God, send me a check in the mail. Work. Take out the plan and do the thing. Maybe you're facing an addiction. Maybe it's not a, a bad addiction of drugs, alcohol, pornography. Maybe it's not that. Maybe you're addicted to um, coffee. Maybe you... You, you cannot. Oh, I'm touching some people's bone, baby. I am getting in there. Y'all better watch out. And your mama's amongst them. Maybe. Maybe that's, maybe that's your vice, though. Maybe, is, you got half five cups of coffee a day. Let me tell you what. You better be worried about more than your addiction. You better worry about your health. Maybe you've got a vice in your life tonight that, you, that, that, that is controlling you. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes we can, we can get things out of order. Maybe, maybe your thing is Facebook. I know some of you women, I see you on Facebook. Maybe that is your addiction. Maybe you're on that internet for hours upon hours. Clicking, 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 clicking. Oh, let them be my friend. Let me meddle in her business. Is that your addiction? Is that the vice that holds you? We have giants in our life, each and every single one of us, that we desperately need God to move on. That we need God to come in and fight the battle. Because here's the thing. Tomorrow morning, if you wake up and you say, I'm going to fight this battle, you've already lost. Tomorrow morning, you need to wake up and say, we're going to fight this battle. Me and Jesus, and we're going to take it down, and we are going to win. Amen. So how many of you ready for fight? How many of us are ready for the war? There's going to be days that you're going to be hunkered down in a bunker. And it's going to seem like enemy fires all around you. You cannot beat your adversary. 
But God is always, always making His plan work. You need to claim your life first tonight if you're facing problems. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you. Not for harm, but for good. How many of you are claiming for good tonight? I'm going to close with one last point. Throughout this whole story, we find one particular instance. David's older brother gets mad at David. Because David is, is bucking the system. David's saying, rather than being submissive to the enemy, Rather than taking his, his junk, rather than listening to all the propaganda that he pours in my ears, I'm going to stand up against him. And David's older brother says, he snaps at him and gets mad at him and says, who have you left your sheep with? Go back to your sheep. That's the church today. Rather than us being a community of grace, a community who loves and shares everything as the Acts community did, we want to look at you and say, Sister Ruby, you're just, you're just a bad person. I heard what you did out there at the Oasis two weeks ago, and I'm telling everybody about it. <laughs> or, or, Brother Willard, he couldn't preach his way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do that. We, we, we want to throw these little jabs and these little shots and these little arrows. And we want, to, we want to backstab our brothers and sisters in Christ rather than coming alongside them and say, you know what, I know you're struggling with this. I want to help you. I want to give you the resources and the tools in order for you to get over that mountain or to get through that valley. I want to give you that help. That's what God calls us to do. And you know what David did in this situation? He just said, whatever, he turned his mind back to the real problem. Because let me tell you this, you know what the real problem is? Is that there are people who are going to split hell's gates wide open tomorrow. And the next day and the next day, as long as this earth is in existence, there are going to be people splitting hell wide open. And that's the number one problem. Not about who's talking to who and who's fooling around with who. That doesn't matter. What matters is that people come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. And we need to come together as a group and we need to fight for the one main enemy we have. And that's safe. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that tonight, Lord, that we would take these battles and that we would fight them, Lord. That, Lord, that we would claim victory in Jesus' name. Yeah. That, Lord, is the old... The old um, Patriarchs of the faith used to say, we will plead the blood of Christ against these things. Lord, let us be idol smashers. Let us kill the addictions and the vices that are in our lives. Let us see that there is preparation in the way that we need to fight our battle. And then it will be work and days it will be hard. Lord, let us see who you've called us to be and be happy and content in that position. It is Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm hungry. So I love you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, That sounded more like Wilma than Cody. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, oh, this smart mouth made me hungry talking about them. <laughs> All that food. Praise the Lord. I, I appreciate the Lord. I want you to take what Cody was preaching to you tonight. Think about, think about where you're at. We all have battles. How many of you have battles? Yeah, one of us. Any of you here don't have battles? Uh, if you don't, why? Uh, they can help me with mine. Uh, then you need, to, you need to look around you because you're not right where you ought to be with the Lord if you don't have any battles. I appreciate Cody being here tonight. Yeah, he's my, he's my uh, grandson. 
and love him for it very, very much. And me and him's always been buddies. Uh, Cody and I has, and, and uh, I, uh, I laughed a lot of times when he was a little bitty feller. When he was a little bitty feller, he's come down to the house and said, Papa, got you a watermelon, watermelon? And he went, and I said, yes, I have. And I said, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to help you out today. I'm going to give you a half of a watermelon you take it home. But now you can't lay it down. You've got to take it all the way from my house to your house. You've got to pack it. So I cut this big watermelon. I mean a big one in two. I laid it up in his arms and said, now you've got to take that home. Now I'm going to watch you so you don't fall down with it. But you've got to take it all the way home. Now, you, you can't stop before you get there. Well, they lived all the way down to the end of the street. But Cody took it all the way home. I watched him, and he went all the way home. Wasn't but a minute when he got home till I looked, and here come Cody back out the door. And I said, well, here comes that little rascal back up here. Went to myself. When he walks in, he said, said, Papa, let's eat some watermelon. I said, I'll just give you a half one. But it wasn't good like Papa's. <laughs> you see, hallelujah, I said that to say this. I hope his ministry lasts as long as mine has. And I hope he wins a million souls for the Lord. I don't have any sad luck stories to tell you tonight.